Hey everyone, today we're going to be working on the swimming in our character controller. Um, and we're going to be creating a number of things, let me just show you. Uh, so first of all, we're going to learn how to create a water uh, body of water. Now this body of water is not going to be the final form of our body of water editing setup. It's just going to be the foundation for it. And we are going to be editing our player so that he can swim inside of it. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, so as you can see, I have a new little gizmo there, and that's our swim direction. So I'll show you why we have that set while we're walking around on land, but let me tell you what it's there for. So it's there to determine the direction our player swims in once we run into the water. So when we run into the water, we don't immediately start swimming. We can walk around in the water, wade around, and it, it slows our character's speed down just by a little bit. Once we get too deep into the water, we start to swim. And as we're swimming, we can strafe. Uh, that's not strafing. We can move up and forward and back. All right. Now, we can't swim above the surface of the water, and we can't currently jump, but that will be not in this episode, but in the next episode that I'll be showing you how to do that. So we can't jump out of the water here yet. But what we can do is we can go back to the little ramp over here and just walk right out of the water. And it transitions us back into our sort of regular locomotion method that we've been working on this entire time. And that's swimming. So I hope you're excited to get into this with me. Let, let's just do a little bit of housekeeping first because there were some mistakes that I noticed while I was figuring this out and I want to make sure that we fix it before we continue on. So let's actually have a look at what we need to do here. So one of the things that I actually ran into while testing this out is that I realized that whenever our ground ray, let me just demonstrate this. So I'm just going to deselect all of these and check ground ray. Bring the game window up here. Oops. And turn off the collision debug. We have that little red line down here. And if we jump up and just touch the side there, you can see that the red line has moved up. And the reason why that is is because it's taking the collision whenever, you know, whenever our player collides with something. So let's um, open up player controls and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Just going to unpause this, make a few changes to the camera rig so that we're not seeing the debug anymore. All right, so the reason why that's happening is because we have it constantly set whenever the character collides with something. But we want it to only happen when our character is colliding with the ground. And so in order to make sure that happens, what we have to do is we need to copy this, put it inside of an if statement, and then I'm going to copy hit point. We're going to change that to hit point dot y, and we're going to say if it's less than or equal to transform dot position dot y plus 0.25f. And that should prevent uh, the collider adjusting based on, based on whether or not our player, I don't think it actually touched it, but it shouldn't actually collide with it. We'll have a better opportunity to try that out when when we actually do the swimming. Let's look at what swimming looks like in the game. All right, let's start by breaking down what we're going to need for swimming. So I'm just going to run over to the pond, which I should have been at in the first place. Here's what we know about swimming, right? What I've noticed is that if you look at how our camera is oriented, the steer option basically sets the direction that you're going to be swimming. So if I were to start running into the water and just start swimming, you can see that I'm already swimming downwards. Similarly, I can do something like this, where I just do that, readjust the camera without steering, just using the sort of left mouse click, just rotating the camera. And then if I run into the water, you can see I'm swimming downwards. So it seems like, regardless of what the case is, the, the swim direction is basically always going to be locked to what you steer to, but not necessarily what you rotate the camera to. And so this is really interesting. So it should constantly be updating as you're sort of running around. All right, now let's look at the actual controls in the water. Just like with running, you can steer to change your rotation. Uh, now this rotates around the Y axis, but also on the X axis of your player. And you can strafe, you can move forwards and backwards. Oh, well, I can't move backwards because I have that unbound. Um, you can't move downwards, so there doesn't seem to be a way to move downwards like you could with flying, but you can move upwards by holding spacebar. 
So those are basically all the controls we need. Oh, and of course you can jump. Those are all the controls that we really need. So it should be pretty simple to set most of that up. All right, so now that we know what it looks like, let's actually set it up. So I'm gonna start by doing a few things with our environment. First of all, I'm going to take this object, open up Pro Builder. I'm just gonna grab this face, make sure we have faces selected, and I'm gonna shift it over by one. Next, I'm gonna grab this one, bring it up uh, one meter higher than the platform here. Then I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna select all of these faces, I think. Is it selecting hidden? Selecting hidden is off, okay. I'm gonna select these two faces, and maybe I'll select this one as well. I'm gonna bring that forward, then I'm gonna bring this one down. I'll probably just bring this one forward and down as well. All right, so now you can see there's a problem here with, with this object no longer intersecting, so I'm just gonna grab, uh, if I can, this face, and bring it right in so that it does intersect. This is just gonna give us a little bit of a ramp so that we can get into the water. All right, now we can close Pro Builder, and let's create a few new things. So we're going to create a new empty and I'm going to call this water body. I'm going to reset the transforms and I'm going to add a water body script. Create and add. All right so this water body has a water body script and then I'm going to create a 3D object plane. This is going to be our water. So I'm going to reset the transforms and I'm going to delete the mesh collider. Then I'm going to add a box collider. I'm going to set this up to y of 2 for the size and a negative 1 on the y-axis of the center. So that way the, the surface of the water is at the top of the collider and the bottom is obviously extended downwards. So I'm going to rename this water. I'm going to add a new component and this is just going to be a water component. So it's a new script. Just create and add. And then we need a way of controlling the size of the collider. And the way we do that is by creating a new empty inside the water, put a little icon on it, probably the aqua blue right there, and I'm gonna call it floor level. The floor level is just gonna help us determine where the water uh, collider is supposed to end. And I'm gonna change that to negative two on the y-axis. Then just as a final touch, I'm gonna go into material, create a new material. I'm gonna call it water, and I'm just gonna make a couple changes. So first change opaque to transparent, then I'm going to give it like a bit of an aqua color. You can make that as green or as blue as you want. I'm gonna saturate it a bunch and bring down the alpha to about 60. Then I'm gonna take the smoothness up to about nine and I'll just drop it on top of the water and there we go. So now let's make both of these prefabs. And uh, for the most of the part, a lot of the other changes are gonna be scripting. We're gonna be editing this later on so that it's much easier for us to create bodies of water and to create water. Now let's uh, drop the water into the water body and we'll grab the water body and bring it up to about halfway into this platform here. Then I'm going to take it and constrain it against the y-axis and just move it into the corner right here. All right, so now that we have that, let's select our floor level and bring that all the way down and intersect it with the floor. Then I'm gonna take the water and I'm gonna duplicate it and start moving it around. So like one right here, maybe of these two, bring these over to about here, same thing, one more, and that should be good. All right, so now let's just select one of the water game objects and open up the water script. Uh, this is gonna be where we're handling the size of our waters collider. So let's get rid of the update method. We'll get rid of the comment for the start method and we'll create two variables here transform uh, this is going to be the floor level and a box collider col for collider and then in the start method we're going to get the floor level we're going to set that equal to transform dot get child o and that's just going to pick our first child in a list of kind of like an array of our children which only has one so it's going to be get child element zero and then we're gonna do call is equal to get component box collider. Next, let's create a new method. We'll call it public void adjust collider. And in here, we're going to get a float for the water size. And we're gonna set that one equal to vector three dot distance. And then A is gonna be transform dot position. B is gonna be floor level dot position. Then we're gonna create another float and we're gonna call this one water center. And that's gonna be equal to water size divided by two. All right, so now let's apply all this to our box collider. 
So in order to do that, we're going to go col dot size is equal to new vector three. We're going to start with call dot size dot x. Y is going to be water size plus I think like 0 0.25 f is fine. But if you want to create another variable to change and edit the si the sort of cushion around the water, feel free to do so. But I'm not going to bother just because I know kind of what I'm going for. And then we're going to call dot size dot z. Then I'm going to go col dot center is going to be equal to new vector three zero 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 and I'm uh, going to change that middle zero to water center. And so if we just take this adjust collider and drop it into the start method. We'll, we'll be handling this better later on so that we have editability, but for now this should be fine. We should see it working as soon as we start our game. So let's check it out. And it is doing it incorrectly because apparently we forgot to make sure that the center is on the negative axis. So now let's try that again. And there you can see it works as intended. It's a little bit higher than that and we can walk on it which we shouldn't be able to the camera goes through it there's there's an issue right we can walk on it and we shouldn't be able to so let's go to our prefabs select water open prefab and let's just change this to trigger let's also add the water prefab to the water layer yes change children and same with the water body All right, let's go back to our scene and let's select our water body and start working on the water body script. So I'm gonna get rid of update because we don't need it. I'm gonna close out this, we don't need that. And I'm gonna get a reference to player controls, player. And I think that should be it for now. In the start method, I'm gonna say player is equal to find objects of type player, player controls, I guess since there's only going to be one player controls uh, script in our game uh, i'm thinking that if we do end up going the multiplayer route uh, other players will just be like npcs with specific instructions or something like that now we need to set up the interactability so the way we're going to do that is since it's a trigger we're going to go on trigger stay i'm choosing on trigger stay because if we use on trigger enter while also using an on trigger exit, it kind of causes problems. We want to make sure that while the player is walking around in the water, that it is basically saying, yes, you are in the water. On trigger enter can cause some problems with that. So what we want to do is we want to check if other dot get component player controls is equal to player, which it should be. Then we want to set up a couple of variables and the variables that we want to set up is going to be inside the player controller underneath jumping. We're going to create a new category called swimming. Then here we're going to add a float called water surface and a boolean called in water. And let's actually make both of those public. All right, so now that we have those set up in the player controls, let's go back to our water body and let's set those up. So player dot in water is equal to true. And let's make sure that this is only happening if not player in water. And then if player dot water surface is not equal to transform dot position dot y, then we want to set player dot water surface equal to transform dot position dot y. That shouldn't be two equal signs. It's basically saying while the player is inside the water, th this is all going to happen as long as it's not being constantly set as that. So it's going to set it once and then it's going to never do it again until, you know, it. It changes of course then what we want to do is we want to create another on trigger exit and same idea we'll just copy this and we'll just say if player dot in water is true then player dot in water is equal to false and we'll just leave the water surface because we just want to make sure it's set to the to the right level and if we're just walking out of water and back into the water there's no need to reset it it's already there but if we're walking into a, a water body that's on a different surface level, then we do want to reset it. So everything's basically set up for us. So now you would expect that this would work properly. However, there's one other thing we need to do. Let me just show you what I mean. So 
we, we have all of our our trigger boxes there and we walk in and nothing happens. So the reason why this is is because we need to give our water body a rigid body component. Let's uh, change that in the prefabs. Water body, open prefab, rigid body, then we'll set it use gravity, no, is kinematic, yes. All right, so now I'm not really entirely sure why this is the case, but it's basically just gonna use all of those triggers at once. And so this way we can organize all of our water elements into specific bodies of water and make sure that they're all correctly interacting. So now that that's done, let's uh, run our guy into the water and if we select him, you should see that it's telling us we're in the water, where the water surface is. And when we walk out of the water, we're no longer in the water. All right, so now let's actually start making changes on the player controls. I'm just gonna close these two and organize them into a new scripts folder that I'm going to call in environment and this is basically just going to hold all of our environment scripts then i'm going to go to the assets folder select both water and water body and drop those into environment so as i mentioned previously our, our forward swim direction is basically constant constantly being set while we play the game um, and we need to basically emulate that so i'm going to create a new swim direction transform i'm going to create a new boolean and we're going to call this one uh, show swim normal and then let's just quickly we'll just go into our prefab select our player and we're going to create a new empty move this up to underneath move direction call this one swim normal and i'm going to drop it into the player swim direction now if we go back should see that in our player should see that down here as well and uh, actually now that i have my player selected i'm going to hold shift and control and then move the player directly onto the surface so that he doesn't really fall onto the surface anymore. So now let's actually set that up. And the way I'm gonna set that up is inside of a, we'll put it right above axis. So I'm gonna call this one void uh, get swim direction. Inside here, I'm just gonna copy one of these, throw this into here. And instead of fall direction up, we'll go swim direction forward. We'll get rid of the length here so that it's uh, one basically. And then I'm going to change color green to color magenta. And then in here, what I want to do is I want to set our swim normal. If steer, then we want to go swim direction dot Euler angles equals transform dot Euler angles plus new vector three main cam dot tilt dot Euler angles dot X and then zero zero. I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to drop it right above locomotion. And when I select the player and activate the swim normal, I'm just gonna apply all the overrides. Then I'm going to, we should be able to see what I'm talking about. So our, there's our swim normal. You can see it's pointing forward. And when we rotate downwards, it's pointing um, downwards. I mean, you can't quite see it because it's underground. If I just go underground, you can see it's pointing downwards. And that's going to help us tell the, the player controller which way it needs to be moving when we're swimming. All right, so now how are we going to handle the transition between swimming and walking and potentially even flying in the future? Well, the way we're going to do that is we're going to use an enum. So I'm going to create, uh, get rid of that. I'm going to create a new public enum and I'm going to call it move state. And then inside move state, I'm going to add locomotion and swimming. We can add to this later, make the list grow. And then right at the top, right above velocity, I'm going to create a public move state called move state. And we're going to set that equal to move state dot locomotion by default. Next, I'm going to come into update right above locomotion. And we're going to create a switch statement for move state. Now inside here, we're going to create a case move state dot locomotion break that i'm going to copy this and change locomotion here to swimming then i'm going to take the locomotion method copy it and drop it into locomotion so now let's i'm going to close down this and this now let's create our void swimming so now i'm going to grab this one and just drop it in here so that we know it's going to start as soon as we 
as soon as we set it to. In here, we basically need to determine how the player moves around while we're swimming. So first, we need to start by determining the way the player rotates. And I'm just going to steal this directly from locomotion. Rotation is going to be the exact same. So I'm going to copy this, paste it right into here, and that's it. Next, let's actually just start setting the velocity. So velocity is going to be equal to swim, swim direction dot forward times input normalize dot y plus swim direction dot right times input normalize dot x. Then after that, I'm going to say if jump. So basically if the space bar is being pressed, then velocity plus equals transform dot up. That should be fine because transform dot up is basically just one on the up axis. Then finally, I'm going to go velocity times equals, and I'm going to need a new variable for this. So up here, right above water surface, I'm just going to create a new float and I'm going to call it swim speed. And I'm going to set it equal to two. Copy that, bring that all the way down to where it's red and paste that in there. Then I'm going to go controller dot move velocity times time dot delta time. And what that should do is that should give us the very basics of how we're swimming. So if I come into here and just manually set our move state to swimming, holding down spacebar should increase, uh, should move us up on the, on the Y axis, pressing W and S should move us forwards and backwards. And then A and D should rotate us. Uh, Q and E should strafe us. And if we're holding down steer, it should be the exact same thing. And as you can see, when we're using steer to change our direction, it'll actually work. Now, I think one of the things that we're going to have to fix is if we're holding spacebar down and we're also pointing our normal in the up axis, because that's basically going to compound things. And so what I want to do there is I basically want to come in before we multiply by swim speed and go velocity dot y is equal to math f dot clamp uh, float value. So that's going to be velocity dot y minimum is going to be negative one, not equals one, negative one and maximum is going to be one. So this way, we're just saying that regardless of what's going on there, you can only travel on the up axis at a certain speed. And this should prevent that from happening. It should mean that as we're moving upwards, if we also do this, that we're not actually moving any faster than we would have otherwise. So now let's actually make some changes to our locomotion so that when we actually go into the water, we transition into swimming. I'm going to change this back to locomotion. Actually, let's just do that by reverting this. And then I want to come up to just below where we're applying gravity. And here I want to say checking water level. So in here, I want to say if in water, then we want to do some stuff. And one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to basically check against the water level. So I'm going to create a new void get water level here and this get water level is going to be pretty simple we're going to basically create a new float here right after water surface called d underscore from water surface and this is going to be our distance from the water surface so basically our distance from the water surface is d from water surface equal to water surface minus transform dot position dot y and then after that we're going to go d from water surface is equal to math f dot clamp and then the value is going to be d from water surface the minimum value is going to be float dot min value and the maximum value is going to be water surface whoops i put this in the wrong spot so this um should all be inside of the method that we created inside of get water level. So let's just copy that. We're going to throw this on top here. So if in water, then we're going to do that. But we still actually need to fill this out. So what we're going to fill out in here is we're going to do a couple checks. So so the first one we're going to do is we're going to change the speed of the move speed of our character. So we're going to go current speed is equal to math f dot lerp. And we're going to lerp between float A is going to be current speed. Float B is going to be base speed. So this is basically going to make sure that while we're moving around in the water, that if we're too deep, you know, in a certain level, our character is going to start slowing down. And the last float that we're going to put in here is actually going to be a fraction. And this is going to be our next 
float and this one is going to be called our swim level and I'm going to set that equal to 1.25 F. Basically, this is going to be how high our position can be while we're inside the water. So, you know, for instance, uh, it's basically shoulder level. Like if we're swimming, we're going to be about shoulder height. We're probably going to change this in the future. All right, let's go back to our in water here and let's go D from water surface over water, or I guess swim level. And what that should do is it should slow us down inside the water. So let's check that out. So we're moving at full speed. We get into the water and we start to slow down. And then we start to speed up as we go out of the water. So it's all working, which is good. Now, this is all going to be based on whether or not we are actually touching the ground. So what we need to do is we need to actually copy something from ground direction. Um, I actually want to grab all of this for setting the ground ray. And I want to throw this directly above here. I'm going to get rid of all of these and probably this one as well, actually. Um, we'll just push that up. And then I'm going to change this physics here to 0.15 F. And then outside of that, what I'm going to say is if D from water surface, if it's greater than or equal to swim level, then we want to set move state equal to move state dot swimming. What that should do is it should make sure that if our character is at a certain height compared to the surface of the water, that we're automatically transitioned into swimming. This is whether or not we are walking into the water or jumping into the water. Let me show you what I mean. Unexpected character slash. Okay, let me see. Oh. All right, so let's press play and let's check this out. So if we walk into the water like this, we slow down and then we transition into swimming, which is exactly what we want there. In addition to that, if we just come around here and we just jump into the water, we transition into swimming, which is great. So that's working exactly as we wanted it to. Now we need to set up the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna copy all of maybe just this and I'm gonna bring this down into our swimming. I'm gonna put all of the velocity stuff in here and our physics Raycast should actually be down below this and what it should be doing is telling us that if this is what's happening Then then basically what we want to do is we want to use this to determine where the distance from the water surface is So we'll just copy this again here and instead of doing it that way What we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to if it's less than swim level and we're gonna set move state equal to locomotion else we want to limit the height and uh, actually what we need to do there is we need to do that after we set our controllers move position so we need to say transform dot position is equal to new vector 3 we'll go transform dot position dot x then we'll leave this as a zero for now transform dot position Dot Z and then in here we'll go mathf.clamp we will clamp transform.position.y and we will clamp it between float.min value and water surface minus swim level so this way what we have is we have a way of limiting our height in the water and we also have a way of getting out of the water if we want to so now let's walk down into the water swim downwards a bit we're going to swim up to the surface. Oh, but now we stop because we don't want to go above the surface. And then as we continue to swim forward, our feet touch the bottom and we walk out of the water and we're back into our locomotion. So that's basically it. That is how we go from walking to swimming in the water. And just as a, a last thing, let's make sure that we grab the show ground ray inside our ground direction so that we can debug this. So this is going to be inside here and I'm going to change this to 1.5 F. So that should be it. So that's swimming. It would have been nice to be able to finish swimming in this video, but I know that there's a whole bunch more that needs to be done in this particular case. I have to see if we're going to be uh, streamlining the sort of water creation in the next episode because it doesn't really fit into the character controller beyond needing to be able to collide into it. It currently serves the purpose that it needs to. So we'll have to see. Um, and I might try and change the format up uh, for the next episode as well, just because this video, like I recorded it, it was like 50 minutes worth of footage and I edited it down to 30, not including this outro recording. So it's just not really sustainable. And I think there's a more efficient way of getting these videos done such that I could put more videos out every two weeks or so rather than every like month with like a couple updates in between it's kind of like I mean I know I don't have infinite time or anything but 
it'd, it'd still be nice to sort of figure out a better way of doing these these sort of things. That's kind of what this channel is all about, is just figuring it out. Is you know, challenging yourself, doing something that you're not used to or comfortable with, and getting better. So I think that's what I'm going to be doing with these videos. Stream recaps are probably going to be gone as well, um, but I will be updating people on what I've been doing on the streams, maybe in a different way. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Um, if you want to see more of these, you know, subscribe and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. I'll see you guys next time. Super trooper, super trooper, super trooper, and he sells soup.